Good evening, everyone. Um, I just wanted to jump on here um, to say that this year and going forward is going to be a year of blessing and curses. From this point on, we're going to see a lot of stuff where God's going to be stepping in. And I wanted to make this before conspiracy theories start going all crazy about this Iranian leader that died in this helicopter crash. Uh, the president of Iran and a lot of the top leaders was in that helicopter. I think there was like five of them or six that died in that helicopter crash altogether. Um, but God was showing me this, that from this point on, I mean, he, he actually showed this to me before the helicopter crash, but we're going to, we're going to be seeing God's hand in some stuff um, from this point forward concerning Israel um, and those that bless Israel and those that curse Israel um, that they're going to be bringing. Cause remember that word that I got about being content and the lentils and the manna. And it says for what a man sows or whatever a man sows, he'll reap that word that I gave. Well, God gave me this word just a little bit after that. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and um, start uh, reading what scripture said that backs this up and um, how God feels about Israel. In Genesis 12, and starting in 2, it says, this was the Lord had said unto Abram. He told him, he said, get out of thy country from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And it says, and I will make thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curse thee. And in all the families of the earth be blessed. And then it goes on to talk about how Abram took his wife and <coughs> his brother's nephew, I mean his brother's son, Lot with him. And all of their, uh, their people within, you know, his, his uh, workers and uh, Lot's workers and stuff. And they passed through the land into a place called uh, Sakem. <clears throat> and it's a uh, place, a city in Massa located in the valley between Mount Ebo and Mount uh, Jezum, 34 miles north of Jerusalem and seven miles southeast of Samaria. <clears throat> and unto the plain of Moriah, which this right here is where uh, stopped as he first entered into uh, Canaan. It's the part right with the first, it says, in the Canaanite that was in the land. It says, and the Lord appeared to Abram and said, unto thy seed I will give this land. And it says, and there builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. Okay, and then we'll go a little bit further into Genesis and the story of Abram. And this right here, um, it says, in the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, unto thy seed. I have given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. So the land of Israel that was given to uh, Abram and unto his seed, it was a lot, a lot bigger than what 
is the modern state of Israel is right now. Because it went all the way up to the Euphrates River, which is up in Syria. So, I mean, it went, it was a lot bigger. So I just wanted to put that in there of where, where the land that he gave exactly what it was, what land it was. Um, and then here it says, And God said, Sarah, thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant. And with his seed after him. Talking about going into Jacob and, and his seed after him. It says, As for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him, and I will make him fruitful, and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. So God didn't forget Ishmael. He didn't forget Ishmael, even though that he knew Ishmael would be against his brother because the the prophecy that was on Ishmael said that he would be against his brother for generations. And I want to tell you something about Islam. If you go to the Encyclopedia Britannica, it says in there about their prophet Muhammad that wrote the Quran. He is a direct bloodline of Ishmael, the one that wrote the one man that wrote the whole Quran. I just wanted to throw that in there. It says, but, this is God speaking, but my covenant I will establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this time, set time in the next year. <clears throat> it says, and he left off talking with him and God went up from Abram. And I just want to say that this, this is a spiritual, this is the, it, what we see going on in Israel. It is a spiritual family feud, basically. From the descendants of Ishmael and then the descendants of Jacob, which was renamed Israel and had the 12 sons that became the 12 tribes of Israel. It is a spiritual war. And this family, from the illegitimate son of Abram making that mistake after God done promised him he was going to have a son, but they jumped the gun on God and tried to do things their way instead of waiting on God's timing. And boy, isn't that the truth? We do stuff like that all the time. Even to this day, man hasn't like changed much. We try to jump the gun on stuff. Whenever everything, we should be leaving it in God's timing. This just goes to show how how things can get really messed up on down the line whenever you jump the gun, you know. But God's full of mercy because he still blessed Ishmael. He still blessed him. You know, the covenant wasn't to be with him, and it wasn't for him. It was, it was for Isaac of that pure bloodline that Jesus would eventually come from. But he still, he still had, he, he still blessed Ishmael. Okay. So now let's get into Romans. This right here, I want to read this because there's a lot of people even... There's some Christians out there that that thinks it's okay to divide God's land and and they think that the church has replaced Israel and just all kinds of nonsense. And, you know, this right here, this little part right here in Romans, this is Paul. And he is talking to the Roman Gentiles that was grafted in, the Gentiles. And it says, For I speak to you Gentiles, in so much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office. If by any means I may provoke to emulation 
my flesh and might save some of them. But if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. If some of the branches be broken off, and thou, talking about the Gentiles, us Gentiles, being a wild olive tree, so the Gentiles are the wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and with them partakest of the root and the fatness of the olive tree. And see, in Jeremiah, God called Israel his green olive tree. As Gentiles, we are the wild olive tree. It says, boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root. Otherwise, you don't have the goodness of the root. Thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. It says, Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. That's the boast right there that he's telling us. Boast not against the branches. Don't be saying the branches was broke off so that we could be grafted in because that's not... That's... We are not supposed to boast against Israel. It says, well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. And thou standest by faith, be not high-minded, but fear. And that word fear right there is to frighten, to be alarmed, to be in awe, or reverence. Reverence. Not supposed to be in high-minded, but reverence. But in reverence. It says, For if God spared not the natural branches, talking about Israel, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. So we can't be high-minded. We can't be boasting against the branches because we could be broke off. Our branch could be broke off as well. It says, Behold, therefore the goodness and severity of God on them which fail, severity, but towards thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou shalt be cut off. Otherwise we're supposed to continue in God's goodness, in his goodness. Otherwise we can be cut off too. It says, Thou shalt be cut off. That kind of blows out this uh, once saved, always saved. They always try to skip over these kind of verses and stuff on, on issues like this. I mean, nobody can pluck you out of the hand of God. No, they can't. But you can sure jump out of it. It says, And they also, if they abide not, still in unbelief shall be grafted in. Otherwise, if they start believing in Christ, they'll be grafted back in. It says, for God is able to graft them in again. And then it goes on down here and starts talking about the prophecy in the Old Testament that God said himself, it says, for if thou wert cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, <clears throat> and were grafted contrary to the nature into a good olive tree, how much more of these, which be the natural branches, of like the, the original branches of the olive tree, which is Israel, be grafted into their own olive tree? It says, For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles come in. 
And when is the fullness of the Gentiles come in? That's during the tribulation. They're only going to be blind until until that first half of into the tribulate that first half into the tribulation. The Bible says that they will know quickly. They're going to know what's going on quickly in that first three and a half years of tribulation. It says, and so all of Israel shall be saved as it is written. There shall come out of Zion a deliverer, and he shall turn away the ungodliness from Jacob. It says, for this is my covenant unto them. This is God saying that. When I shall take away their sins. And the cross reference to that is in the book of Isaiah. That's what I thought, yeah. There's quite a few like cross references there where it talks about that in Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah. It says, as concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, God's elect, talk about Israel, they are beloved for the Father's sake. <clears throat> what did he say about touching the apple of his eye? They're his beloved. In the Old Testament, God calls Israel his wife. <laughs> wow. It says, For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. For as ye in times past have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. If it wasn't for their unbelief, Christ would have never been crucified, would have never died for our sins. We would have never been grafted into the olive tree. That right there alone should make you love Israel. I'm sorry, but it should. God loves Israel. He still loves them. That's his beloved he still loves them. Anything God loves, we should love. I know I've had a love for Israel ever since I was a little bitty kid, and I can't even explain it because God put it in my heart to love that land. I've never even been there before, but that is like my lifelong dream. I would love to go over there and walk where Christ has walked. I would love to go over there and be baptized again in the Jordan River. I would love to go see the Sea of Galilee. There's so many things that I would just love to go over there and just be able to just walk in the footsteps that our Savior walked in. I would love to go to the mountain of the Lord. I have a love for them. I just can't even explain it because I've, I've never even been there before. But I have a love for those people and a love for that land. It says, even so have these also now not believed that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy. It's telling us that our mercy, they will obtain mercy through our mercy. For God has concluded them all in unbelief that he may have mercy upon all. He had to partially blind them so that the prophecies would be fulfilled of Christ dying for our sins. He had to. He had to partially blind them because it says that blindness in part has happened to Israel. I'll tell you what. It's just mind-boggling, though, how, I mean, but God knows the beginning all the way to the end, and he knew exactly how everything was going to have to work out. Because he said that he wishes none, none would perish, but all would come, but they would all would come to repentance. I mean, we're all God's creations. He loves us all. It's just the devil got some people messed up, and the devil's 
out seeking who he can devour and who he can take away from the Father because he's on a vengeance mission to take as many as he can away from the Father, the Father's children, to get back at him because he done knows. He done knows what his future is. And he knows his time is short. And he's out seeking who he can devour. But anyway, I'm going to get off of here and I will keep all of y'all in my prayers. Keep Israel in our prayers, Lord, and let's bless them. God, I bless Israel. I bless Israel not because I want your blessings upon me, but because I love those people over there. It's a love that you've put in my heart, Lord. And I love that land over there. There's something about it, and I've never even been there. But, Lord, I pray for the peace of Jerusalem and the peace of Israel, the peace of Christ, that, that unspeakable peace, unexplainable peace that only Christ can give them, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Y'all have a wonderful evening. And I'll talk to you all soon.